So in the first part, I introduced a technique to study directly series and theta function for one variable uh, function. So now I will start the second part, which will deal by uh, about uh, theta function in several variables. And uh, more precisely, I will we will study theta function associated to polynomials defined by or, uh, based by this kind of formula. So the, uh, the important thing here is the polynomial p. The, the polynomial q. The, the polynomial q. It's not important because there are no s here. So uh, for the for this talk, I will work with q equal one. But we can put any smooth function here. It's not a, a, a problem. This is the what we call directly series associated to the polynomial p, and we can also define uh, for several polynomial p one. Pr S1 as a multi zeta function. And this is a generalization of a classical multi zeta function defined by. Milinzaghi the uh, function defined by this formula so uh, and this function can be written in this form. And as you can see, this is a particular case of this kind of data function. And this is what, what I call the linear case, because the polynomial in the denominator are linear form. And uh, this is a classical and well-studied uh, subject. And uh, uh, in my uh, point of view, uh, I am interested by in some sense, by singularity. So, these polynomials are not uh, has very simple singularity. So, the problem about, uh, here it's different for my. Uh, uh, in some sense, it's it is an, an important problem when, when when you study values. But for uh, the analytic continuation, it's a trivial problem. It is it's highly not trivial when you study with values, but for analytic continuation, you have just linear form. So it's, it, you can prove analytic continuation in only two lines. Uh, it's it, it's something some simple. But here, uh, polynomial can be singular. And uh, to prove analytic continuation, it's more complicated. And uh, we are far to obtain some good formula for, uh, uh, for values, for example. Because if you want to study values here, uh, then you, uh, uh, the singularity of polynomial play an important role, and it's not uh, easy to uh, to study. But anyway, uh, we have some technique to to obtain values for non-negative, non-positive integers. Values for po for positive integer in this case are are are, are really difficult, and until now there are no no no, no uh, result for values at uh, positive. Integer, but for non-negative integer, we have some, 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 some results, and I will explain later how to obtain this. But now let, let me give a motivation why we study this kind of data function. So the first one, it's, for example, if you are interested by the number of solution for a given polynomial p satisfying. We extend to infinity as 
the norm into infinity. So we are interested by the, by the number of solution for I for any given t. We are inter interested by the number of solution of this Diophantian equation. This is a cl classical problem to, to try to understand the number of solution of Diophantian equation. So we, uh, for a given key, it's uh, <laughs> impossible to have a good formula dependent on key. But if you study this, the, the, mean, the mean value of this polynomial, of this function, and you, you, I will call it Ex, the mean value, then uh, if you want to study this mean value, you, ta you take the mean Stiles transform of this function. And if, if you compute the mean Stiles transform of this function, then it is easy to prove that this e e equal to the direct series. for real S big enough. So if you are able to prove that this function has meromorphic continuation, uh, if, if you have a half plan of convergence, if you denote by sigma e is abscissa of absolute convergence, uh, and if you can prove that you have analytic continuation to the left, then, for example, by using Tauberian theorem, Delange theor uh, Tauberian theorem, or uh, Landau Ta Tauberian theor theorem, etc., you can deduce from this analytic information an asymptotic for this function. And uh, this asymptotic, it, it's usually uh, of the form plus as an error term minus delta. And where sigma e is the first singularity, and q it's a polynomial of de degree log uh, of degree the, the order of this singularity minus one. And if you have more information on the other pool, you can obtain also other term, which depend on this singularity. So this is one of the motivation for studying this this data function, and you can also generalize this. Uh, and state studying the number of solution. Here we, uh, we count the number of solution with m1, mn integer. But you can sometimes, uh, w w sometimes we are interested by the number of solution sat satisfying some condition. Satisfying some condition, and uh, uh, for example, uh, you you are interested by number of solution of this Diophantian uh, uh, equation with uh, integer point in some semi-algebraic state, and in this case, if you take the mean transform of the mean values. Here it depends also in in your set key. So uh, the million Stiles transform, it's this f this series. Now, if you are able to prove analytic continuation for this data function, then by uh, using also, Tauberian theorem, you obtain asymptotic for these uh, mean, mean values. But, and here, to obtain analytic continuation, depend on both in the singularity of the polynomial P and also on the singularity of the semi algebraic set, for example.
Another motivation came from uh, algebraic number theory. And from the study of classical theta function in algebraic number theory, like uh, Ditkin theta function and Hickey theta function, etc. And, and now I will explain the link. And first I will define uh, Ditkin theta function. I will explain the link for Ditkin theta function, but uh, for people who work in this sub uh, subject, it's clear that all these things extend to more general Hickey data function, etc., etc. Now let key be a number field. So this is a second motivation. So this key be a, num a number field of degree. So the Ditkin theta function is defined by of T is defined by theta key of S equal to sum of uh, on E integral ideal of so e integral ideal and here we have the norm of e to power s and this is defined for real s bigger than than one and this is an, an important object in the in the study in the arithmetic of number fields and we will give a theorem which will summarize some results, known results about this theta function. So we know that this function converges absolutely in the half plan real S bigger than one. And it has another product. Product on prime ideal of uh, it's uh, 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 an integral uh, ideal of uh, O key. Ah, okay. Uh, So here we take the sum on prime uh, prime ideal of O key, and the other product, the factor of all our product is the following. Now we have another product. And we know also that this function has homeromorphic continuation to the world complex plane C with only what one pole. Uh, one sample pole in S equal one. And we know that the residue in this pole of Ditkin theta function, it's given by this formula to R1. I will explain the, the meaning of this parameter. And K, HK, and K, the discriminant. Uh, this is what we call the analytic 
class number formula. This is the analytic class number formula. We're, uh, we're here. H key, H key is the class number. Uh, R1 is the number of real embedding of of key two R two is the number of complex embedding of key and uh, R, R key it's the regulator. And uh, oma omega key is the the number of root the of root of uh, uni unity. In key, in key, and delta key is the discriminant. The discriminant of of Q. And you have we have also a functional equation. If you r if we define the function phi phi k of s by this formula, uh, one two p uh, minus s gamma s two r two and uh, discriminant. To power s two theta key s, then this function has homomorphic continuation to the whole complex plane uh, with only two poles in s equal one and s equal zero, and uh, for any s in c minus zero one, you have the functional equation. Minus s. This is the functional equation. So this is the some basic property of this Ditkin theta function. So the question: How to prove this kind of result? So one can use uh, uh, harmonic, of course, harmonic analysis in groups, take thesis and all this stuff. And this is important, for example, to obtain. Uh, Functional equation, etc. But there are also another way. It's to more, may, maybe more explicit one. It's the uh, and uh, based on the, for example, on the work on of uh, Shintani, Pierre Casanugues, uh, Barsky, and uh, Colmes. All these people use this uh, <laughs> this this method because it gives some more pertinent information. Uh, uh, no, uh, when you study, for example, values at non-positive integer and the periodic inter interpolation. And in this case, it's better to use Shintani decomposition, uh, as it was done by Pierret, Kasunugues, uh, Barsky, and Colmes, etc. And I will explain this part, because maybe it's less, less known than the th thesis, which is more algebraic. <laughs> What? So zeros are to this kind of data function. Ah, I will explain <laughs> just a few minutes. Uh, 
uh, remark. So we have another product. So uh, th from the other products, we deduce that uh, if real S is bigger than one, then it is not vanishing. Yeah? And also, uh, if by functional equation, if real S it's less than zero, then we have only trivial uh, uh, zero, which come from a gamma factor. And the non-trivial zero are, are in this strip. And we have also Riemann generalized the Riemann hypothesis. Or no, no trivial zero are in the line real S equal one over two. This is generalized the Riemann hypothesis. But it is. <laughs> And you can also prove, as, uh, as in the case of uh, Riemann zeta function, that you have some region without zero, which are close to the line of convergence. And uh, so but this situation is similar to the Riemann zeta function, in some sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is an analog. And we can prove it exactly in the same manner. You, you have just to, to prove that we, uh, there are no zero in the line of convergence uh, real s equal 1. And then you apply uh, uh, Dolan's theorem, for example. Uh, but but the, 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 the proof is uh, exactly the, uh, the same. OK, so and uh, from this, we can uh, for example, also said something about the, v the values. Uh, so, so a remark. Uh, if is not uh, a totally real number. Which means that the number of complex embedding is not zero. Then it follows from the functional equation. And from the vanishing of the gamma factor, that the zeta key of minus n is equal to 0 for all n in n. This is just to use the, the functional equation and the vanishing of uh, gamma factor. And uh, so f for the study it of uh, uh, values on non-positive integer only the, the the total real number fields are uh, relevant because in the case of the, uh, uh, the if the field it's not totally real number the the solution is simple <laughs> and in the total real number field we have the following theorem which called Sieg Siegel the theorem we said for let key be a totally real number field then for any n uh, in n key of minus n it's rational number. And you deduce from this correlates. So for uh, for any totally real number fields, uh, we have for any n in n, theta key uh, 
uh, now and it's positive number you have two the value in 2n it's up to rational factor it's it's ras uh, the or multiple of these numbers this is just by functional equation you deduce it by functional equation this is a corollary of this statement So now I will give some idea about the, the proof and uh, about Chantani methods. So to prove, for example, that the Ditkin data function is absolutely convergent in the half plan real s equal one uh, so you have just to to remark that we have formally this is true formally This is true formally because we know that uh, in any in ideals here, factors as, uh, is a product of prime ideal. So you, by using this factorization, you have formally this this relation. This just we know that any ideal e can be written uh, unique, uniquely in this form. So this gives you uh, formally this relation. And if we want to prove that uh, this is uh, uh, convergent, it's enough to prove that this is convergent. So it's enough to prove that uh, it's absolutely convergent. If you prove that this series is absolutely convergent, then this this other product it's absolutely convergence and then you have the equality so it is enough to prove this and in order to prove this this is equal one over and p Sigma, uh, in the circle of this talk, I will write S, uh, usually uh, sigma plus E tau. Sigma is a re real part of S, and tau is imaginary part. And you can write this formula as uh, the sum on prime number ordinary prime number and a sum of prime ideal which divide p and 1 over and p sigma so what i mean by this maybe not all you are not for people who are not familiar with this we have for for p we have the, the this ideal factor like hypofactorization of this form and the prime here are exactly the prime uh, satisfying this condition. And we call this prime the divisor of, of P. So we are summing uh, on this prime who divides uh, P. And here, so we have uh, uh, this is equal to sum of p, p divised, uh, p ordinary prime, sum of ideal prime who divised p, and here and p, it's uh, 
And P, by definition, it is the cardinality of U P divided by P. And we know that uh, uh, if you, you did not, so this is equal to uh, P to uh, F P. And F P, it's the residual degree. F P, it's the, the degree of the extension uh, P to Z over P Z. This is the finite extension, and the, the residual de degree it's defined by this formula, and this. So you have n p; it's equal p to power f p, and so here we have one of p uh, f p sigma. So we know that uh, f p. So this is less than the sum of ordinary prime, the sum of prime dividing p, and if p is an integral, so this less than p sigma, and the number of prime divisor of p, it's less than n. The number of, because we have this formula, uh, and, uh, and the degree of the, the extension, it's equal to the sum of e p f p. Dividing. This is classical formula. And so we did use from this that the number of P dividing P it's less than N. So this is less than N sum of one over P sigma. P it's ordinary prime. And this it's converge if sigma bigger than 1. So you have half plan of convergence. And you have also, and this gives you also the other product. Now, if you want to obtain Meromorphic continuation, and you need, and if you want to use Shintani, you can use Shintani method, and I will explain him uh, how to do that. So, from Ditkin. Zeta function to pi series. associated to polynomials. So here I, if I start for simplicity with the number field, or totally real number fields of degree t. And uh, I recall that, that the class, uh, the ideal class group is finite. So uh, we can write for real S bigger than 1. We can decompose the Ditkin zeta function as a sum on class in this group of partial zeta function. Where zeta c s, it's the sum the sum of integral ideal in the, in the class c this is partial zeta function so it's enough to prove an analytic continuation for this partial zeta function and <laughs> More generally, there sometimes, if if you are, for example, interested by 
some data function with uh, well, some variant with, with uh, character, then it's better to work with in, uh, sl slightly more general, in this slightly more general setting. So I will introduce some notation. So for a given that f be an integral ideal, denotes by sigma 1, sigma n, the real embedding of t in R. And we define k f as the set of alpha in k such that alpha is totally positive, which means that the value of the embedding of all embedding is positive. And alpha congruent to one mode f defined also ef as the set of uh, she uh, fractional ideal of t such that g and f and f are coprime defined also pf as the set of principal fractional ideals such that alpha is in qf and defined the set rf which is the quotient of these groups This is the, what we call the group of narrow ideal class modulo f, or the right, the right class uh, group modulo f. And this is also a finite group. Sorry. This is a finite group, and for C in class in, in this group. Donc, uh, the associates, donc, the, uh, the associated partial zeta function, partial right zeta function is defined by the following formula. the sum of G uh, integral ideal and G is in the, the class uh, of C and G and F co prime and G you have uh, usually the norm of G to S and we, for all this kind of problem, we are interested about the, the analytic continuation of this partial zeta function. And now I will explain the link between this and the uh, uh, zeta function associated to the polynomial. And I will flow for this the work for, of Shintani and Pierre Castanugues and uh, uh, Barsky. And uh, uh, there is also a variant of Colmes. Colmes uh, give a refinement of this method. 
But I, so uh, if you are interested, you can also read the paper of Colmes for this uh, refinement. But for, uh, here I will only explain the method of uh, Shintani and Pierrette Casunguez. So, okay. So we can write this as sum of G in the set X. And set, the set X is defined by this formula. So I choose, let E uh, be an integral ideal. In class, uh, in the inverse of the class C, so you, you will find an integral ideal uh, not in C but in the inverse of the class C in, the, in this group, and then X can this set X can be written as the set of G ideal of U key such that G is the inverse of the class of E, which is equal C. And uh, G and F are co-prime. So, for an element, for a, a given element G, to be in F, it's equivalent to the fact that uh, uh, we have E uh, G principal ideal from the definition of this group. So, if G it's in the inverse of E. That means that G times E is trivial, so it's principal. So we can write E G in this form. So with alpha, uh, the uh, alpha totally positive. No, I, I use this notation for totally positive number, which means that all the values of the unbidden and alpha are positive, and alpha congruent to one. Mod, mod f and alpha so there exists alpha in e alpha is necessary in e such that e g equal alpha alpha totally real and alpha congruent to one mod f so we can by using this description of the set x we can write The partial right data function as the following. So for real s bigger than one, we can we have theta f uh, c s, which equals to uh, it's equal by using this this description, it's equal to an e s sum on Alpha in a set a prime modulo EF plus, I will explain uh, uh, of N alpha. Where, uh, 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 and th this is equal to an ES sum alpha in E prime modulo. F plus the norm of alpha, the absolute value of the norm to uh, to power minus s because this is it's equal to the norm of this ideal, <laughs> and the set a pri prime, it's the set of alpha and e as here such that alpha it's totally positive. And alpha and it's congruent to one mod mod f, and as you can see here we have the ideal. So uh, 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 we can have uh, alpha equal beta, and alpha it's uh, this equality means that the difference between the two it's uh, a positive unit. So this is the reason where we have to take uh, the sum modulo positive unit.
and so F plus it's the set of u unit uh, which are positive and congruent to one mod F. <coughs> It's just to no. so we have the same sum, so we have now to understand the action of units and uh, and to write this sum in maybe some more suitable form so and to describe more precisely a set of representation of this action. So this was first done by, was first done by Shintani and uh, uh, Shintani proved the following important uh, uh, Shintani Dima. And Shintani proved uh, the following lemma. But before giving Shintani lemma, maybe I, I need some uh, notation. So n it's the degree of the number fields. And uh, for x in k, we denote by x1 xn, the, the, the conjugate of uh, x. And by using this embedding x, x1, xn, so you can uh, key, you can identify We identify a uh, key with uh, uh, sub algebra Q algebra view Q of the, the R algebra Rn. By using this, this map, so you can. Uh, key can be ident identified to uh, with sub Q algebra of this R algebra. And we have uh, Rn equal V Q times Q R. So with this notation, we can now, I can give the Shintani's lemma. So Shintani proved that there exists a finite number of of con C uh, V G one V G R G G in some finite set G such that R plus N, it's equal to the disjunct union of G, where V G E for any G and any E, it's in U key and uh, V G E, it's totally positive. This is the Shintani decomposition, and this is the uh, disjunct union. So 
this decomposition implies as a corollary that for any given x, totally positive, uh, for any x totally positive, uh, there exists uh, unique and uh, unique unit totally positive unit in EF plus and unique G in G and unique uh, M1 Mn and Q plus N such that X can be written in the form U M1 Vg1 uh, plus M N Vg uh, uh, M uh, no please. M R G in R G here and M R G and G M R G can be written in this form in 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 unique way. So I know where. This will allow to describe this. So we can assume without loss of generality that uh, by multiplying, if necessary, by an integer, that uh, uh, the for any g in g and for any uh, i from 1 to rg, the vector v uh, g i, it's in the product of the two ideals ef. You have just to multiply by uh, or suitable integers. And uh, if you multiply by a suitable integer, then the cone remains the same. It, multiplying by, by integers uh, didn't change the cone. But if you multi multiply by suitable, and, and suitable integer, you can, this, you can assume that this vector r in this eight years. So we, we will assume this. And uh, we will, f for uh, any g in g, we will define the set this is d uh, r g e as, as the, the set of elements of the form uh, sum of x g x i v g i uh, e from 1 to Rg, such that xi is an element of Q, uh, and okay, and uh, and we assume also that x is in uh, in. Uh, x is in an E and x is congruent to 1 mod f. Okay. So this set is finite. Be it is finite because uh, this condition imply that it is uh, in some it is subset of lattice and uh, uh, or subset of lattice which is uh, bounded it's finite so this is finite and 
So we, we have the following, this gives the following k lemma. Uh, we can uh, choose, we can take uh, the system as uh, a system of representation of E prime mod EF plus the set E, which is the set of x plus sum from e equal to 1 to uh, g m i v g i where x is in the set r g i and g in g and in m i it's positive integer non-negative integer come from this decomposition. You have to just to decompose here uh, mi as an integer plus a rational number between 0 and 1. And also m to, uh, until mr shy, you, 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 you decompose this number as an integer plus a rational number <laughs> from uh, between 0 and 1. And you have you have this. So now we have a system of a representation. So we can now return to the, our data function, and and uh, we can return to our data function, and And we, we proved that for real S bigger than 1, zeta key, uh, zeta f, the, par the right partial zeta function, it's equal to an E S sum on alpha a prime mod f, uh, mod e f plus. Uh, and here we have norm q, q alpha minus s. Now, now we have a system of representation representing of this action. So we can write this series as the sum of g in g. And we have a sum on uh, we have sum of uh, on x in uh, G I and sum sum on M and N N and here we have just one over the norm of of the element X plus sum of E from one to uh, G um, M I V G I OK. And this is equal to the norm of E to S, sum of G on G, sum on X. Here, this is finite sum. And here you have sum of M, N, N, N. Here you have 1 over the product uh, from uh, Maybe it's not good to use e from key from one to n. Uh, here you have x i plus uh, x k e plus sum from e from one to uh, g and m i, and here you have the conjugate h e e. Okay, to s. So this is sum. Same thing, and here you have sum of m and n, n, and this is a power of polynomials.
So this is also the link. So we put the, so if you are able to prove that zeta function associated to polynomial of several variables has meromorphic continuation, and if you are able to compute values, etc., then you can use this decomposition to obtain some information about pars partial zeta function. And this is, uh, uh, Shintani used this technique to prove, uh, to, to give a new proof of the theorem of Siegel, that the values are uh, on non-positive integrates are uh, ras rational number. And Pierre Casunugues, Barsky, and uh, after him, after them, uh, Colmes used also this technique to prove some, some more precise results about the uh, periodic interpolation, etc., etc. But it, the, the advantages of this method that it is really explicit. <laughs> really explicit, modulo Shintani decomposition. <laughs> so, yeah. But the uh, Shintani decomposition is uh, maybe it's algorithmic. Way. <laughs> the, 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 some people try to, write, to, to do it, but it's not. Maybe you know more <laughs> better than me this problem. I don't know this, the statue of this. I know that some, some people try to do it in, in degree three, in explicit way. And, uh, OK, so don't. So now I. After this motivation, I will explain how to study this kind of data function. So the polynomial which appear here are uh, uh, elliptic. So the, the singularity of this polynomial at infinity, it's not so bad. It's uh, maybe it's, uh, so for this polynomial, for example, uh, the singularization, it's, it's easy in some sense. Uh, in some, but uh, uh, because the polynomial is elliptic at infinity. So for elliptic polynomial, we know from uh, the, uh, the work of Mahler in 1930, Mahler give, um, give the um, method to prove analytic continuation for elliptic polynomial. So this is the, uh, maybe, it is, it is known uh, in, in this case. But uh, the, 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 the importance of the work, for example, of Casunugues came from the evaluation of the values. The analytic continuation, it's a consequence of the work of Mahler, but, but the, the computation of values and the closed formula she, she obtained from uh, uh, values are really uh, new as his, uh, uh, it was an important part of her work. Malar pro uh, pr uh, proved only analytic continuation. Complex, yeah. Complex, yeah. 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 The, but the there is periodic Malar's formula also. That any continuous function you can express as a series of uh, binomial coefficients. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but, uh, but the, the link about periodic continuation, uh, uh, interpolation of the uh, the theta function, and uh, this may be the first people has, uh, it was the, f uh, uh, maybe it's Casunugues, first yes. person. So they did not use Malus. No, no. So I will write so for polynomial P, the directly series of this form. So, uh, and uh, so if you are interested by 
did can data function uh, uh, it's enough to work with polynom with elliptic polynomial but uh, uh, it is also interesting to to ask what happens when p is not elliptic and when when the singularity of p uh, become worse worse and try to understand the connection with this problem uh, which come from uh, number theory and the singularity uh, th theory but, uh, let me give just uh, some historical sketch about this data function so the first the first result on this was proved by Millin uh, in ni 19 maybe uh, and the Millin proved that for a given polynomial p, uh, if p has uh, uh, more and more has positive coefficient, coefficient, then by he, he, using his what's what what now we call Millin formula, we can prove analytic continuation of this data function but his method it's not so explicit so it's difficult to obtain some information on poles and on values by using his uh, method and uh, for elliptic polynomial it was uh, done by Mahler in 1930 and what I mean by elliptic polynomial it's mean in this case it mean that the uh, if p is of the degree d, at if if we denote by p d the homogeneous parts of degree d, then this is no vanishing for all x in uh, r plus n. This is the assumption p elliptic used by by Mahler, and in this case he obtained uh, analytic continuation and. Uh, in some explicit uh, way, more explicit than 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 Mahler, than Millin, and around 1907, etc. There are a lot of work with the uh, Shintani, Pierret Casunugues, Pierret Casunugues, and uh, also Colmes, uh, Barsky. In, uh, there are a lot of work in this subject in connection with the, valu the values of zeta k. In order to understand the values of zeta k of minus n and uh, to, to obtain uh, periodic interpolation, so they study the, this problem also in elliptic case, usually in elliptic case. And uh, uh, Pierre Kassunuges obtained several particular we obtain several closed formula for, for these values in terms of uh, Bernoulli number, etc. And uh, after that, there are uh, uh, Sargos in the 80s, he studied uh, this problem in, for uh, P non degenerate. Which mean in it's uh, the, the class of non degenerate it's close to the class of p with a positive coefficient, but he obtained in this uh, uh, for this class several important results about uh, the uh, the the poles and he give a precise description of the sets of poles and uh, 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 of this uh, in explicit way he used poly Newton polyhedron of p to understand the singularity of p at infinity, etc. And there are also the work of uh, Lichtin, also in the, 18th, in the, in the case of uh, uh, epoelliptic elliptic polynomials. So what is, what, what is an epoelliptic polynomial? It's polynomial satisfying this condition for any alpha no zero. And after that, I proved in uh, uh, maybe 19, 
uh, uh, I, I study this problem for polynomial P satisfying an assumption which I call H0S, and H0S is the following assumption. I, this is bounded. We don't assume that it goes to zero, but only bounded. And, 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 uh, and for polynomial satisfying this condition, we have uh, analytic continuation. And we think that this is optimal condition. So in some sense, this is the, the end of this story, for, uh, at, at least from the point of view of analytic continuation. But there are a lot of, of, of work to do for values, etc. But for analytic continuation, this uh, condition is, in some sense, opt optimal. So what do you say to see? To see. Uh, to, to see. And uh, when you say for the generate polynomials? Also to see. All this. For, for the Newton polygon at infinity? Yeah. Okay. And in the case of curves? Do you need a degeneracy uh, assumption, or we have to move uh, without uh, this kind of assumption? What do you mean by curve? Uh, 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 polynomial in two variables. Ah, but, but it depends. Uh, <laughs> Here we don't need uh, uh, Newton polynomial, of no, course. No, no. Yeah, I mean, in the, in the in work in, in the 80s, when you say. Uh, ah, the work of. Uh, in Sar the work of Sargos, yeah. Yeah, for Sargos. Okay. Mm. So my question is, if uh, I just assume that we are in two variables, yeah. do we need uh, this assumption of non-degenerate or...? Yeah, he need to be because they are not... Uh, you, you think about just the singularization. The singularization is important for integral. But you, uh, the first step is to approximate the series by the integral. And the, all these assumptions are uh, used in this step. So uh, the, the, if you start with your... So with series, you, you have to approximate be, with some sum of integrals, which look uh, like like this one, with some kernel kernel here. Yeah, and assumption uh, are used here because for for this integral, uh, there are no problem you, uh, because we have uh, Eronaka theorem. We have a resolution. Uh, we are in characteristic zero, and you can use resolution of singularity. Don't we? Don't need any assumption here. So the problem really it's in the connection, and for the connection he used the non digit and also for example of, uh, on all this work we we use for the, to, to establish the connection we use the, the, this assumption. So I will explain now, uh, in some sense, the some techniques used to to study this series, and maybe I will focus on not on the more general result because uh, we need more uh, more time to explain the the, the technique and. Uh, but uh, maybe I, I will explain in, in detail the, the work of Sargos in the non-degenerate case. Because in this case, uh, this is enough for arithmetic application because it contains uh, elliptic uh, case. And it's in some sense, geometrically, it's also interesting. It's enough interesting to explain. And we can see several things in this for this class. So, uh, as I explained, uh, so if to, in order to study this series, the first step is to to approximate this by some integral, because uh, for integral we have several techniques. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as I said before, if uh, you can re use resolution of singularity, you can use advanced technique. So we have to approximate this discrete object by some continuous. And the first uh, uh, function which 
we want to, to approximate by it. It's the, the, it's this function. And we want to approximate this by this. So if you work with uh, some good polynomial, for example, uh, elliptic polynomial, then the difference between if this one is conversion for real S bigger than sigma A, and uh, for, for example, for P elliptic, then also uh, this one is convergent for sigma A. And if you take the difference between the two, This function is holomorphic. We can prove that this is holomorphic in some half plan big in, bigger than the, uh, the half plan on, of convergence. So if you are able to prove the analytic continuation for this one, this gives the analytic continuation of ZPS to this half plan. That this this method works in in, in elliptic case, but if uh, the, the, this method, uh, if you want to control this difference, you need a control about the derivative of p over p. So if this decreases uniformly, then you have a good approximation. But if this it's not decreasing uniformly, then the approximation if is bad. And uh, for, uh, for the, the last assumption as SUS, it's so bad that the approximation is not with only one integral, but with an, an infinite number of integrals. So this is the reason for which this, uh, this kind of uh, assumption appear. But, but anyway, you need, in all this method, we, you, you need first to understand the analytic continuation of this kind of integral. And what is the idea, uh, uh, how to prove analytic continuation is of this kind of integral? So the idea is that if P is monomial, then the problem is trivial. And this is, this is easy. You compute. And, uh, if p is a monomial, so this is easy. So the idea is to reduce p to monomials. And uh, so we, we, we use a resolution of singularity. So you can use Eronaka theorem. Uh, the Eronaka theorem, it's general theorem, but it's not so explicit. <laughs> so, so sometimes, for example, we, we need explicit form in order, for example, to compute values. <laughs> in, in order to compute values for zeta function, we need a really explicit form. And uh, uh, so Eronaka, if you use only Eronaka, it's not, it's not enough. So uh, you need some more explicit technique. And the non-degenerate case, it's interesting, because in this case, we can uh, instead using Eronaka uh, and <laughs> reminding that we don't need really resolution of the singularity. We need only a weak version of resolution of singularity. So by, by using Newton polydron, which is a combinatorial uh, uh, object, we can, uh, in some sense, do resolution of singularity by hand and uh, in an explicit way and obtain closed formula by explicit closed formula in some, in some cases. And I will explain. Uh, D this method uh, b based on uh, Newton uh, polydron at, at infinity. That may best maybe for it will be for the afternoon. I have uh, I have, yeah, have I have five minutes. Okay. okay. But maybe if, uh, before starting, I will recall the form of Eronaka we use for people who are not familiar with singularity theory. So we uh, 
we use usually this for this theorem it's uh, eronaka this is not the general form of eronaka but it's consequence of uh, the big eronaka's theorem let f1 f and b and analytic function uh, in a neighborhood of zero in Cn or Rn. So there exists uh, an open X containing zero. There exists an analytic manifold uh, Y of dimension N. Uh, there exists a proper analytic map pi from y to x such that uh, one p, uh, p induce an isomorphism between uh, y minus p minus 1 of the union of the divisor the, uh, 0 to n uh, and uh, x minus the union of the divi the, this divisor okay and two for any y in big y they are local coordinate y equal y1 y n w1 w n uh, in a neighborhood of y uh, in a neighborhood v of y uh, uh, centered on in uh, uh, centered at y such that for any omega in this neighborhood, you have, and for any uh, g from one to n, if you take, you compute if g of p of y, this is equal to u g y times a monomial. Uh, And also the Jacobian of this of p computed in omega, it's equal to equal to u of y time a monomial, where we are alpha equal alpha 1, alpha n, and alpha g equal alpha g1, alpha g n r uh, n tuple of integer. And uh, and uh, the function u and u g are analytic. Uh, non vanishing function on uh, V. So, what we call invertible function. So, uh, 
this theorem said that you, you can transform in something by some change of variable your function fg to homonomial times a factor which it is analytic and non-vanishing, invertible factor. Uh, there are a lot of study of, of this kind of object in, in geometry, and to understand in explicit way this change of variable, this is blowing up. That's something. Yeah. Uh. But uh, in this afternoon, I will explain in the non dilinear case how to construct ex in explicit way this transformation by, uh, by using a combinatorial object we call a uh, uh, Newton polyhedron at infinity associated to polynomial P. And I will st maybe stop here. Thank you. Mm. I have some remark to the list of names that you ah. gave, because there was also work of Delin and Ribet. Ah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, 1980 of 60 pages, which contains very explicit periodic interpolation, not only for the dedicant of zeta, but also for abelian and functions at negative points. And my question also is connected to this. Um, there are formulas of Bernoulli numbers over rational field case. And can this method do some, provide some formulas like Bernoulli? Numbers in the totally real case. Yeah, yeah. So so it's kind of generalization but, of but, uh, but usually we can also express some people sometimes uh, think that they discover new uh, Bernoulli number, but usually we can express them in the classical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only for billion fields, yeah, for any totally real. Mm. Because for uh, billion uh, fields, I think it was known, yeah, but for that. General total real, I don't know if it gives you this kind of Bernoulli numbers. Uh, uh, general, yeah. uh, usually, usually it's expressed in, in usual Bernoulli number. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. But uh, you, you, uh, you. It's realized also in Paris GP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but uh, you, you're right you, uh, about, you, about your remark. I, I, uh, uh, this part of work, it's different for uh, uh, you mentioned. It's yeah. important, but it's uh, use more uh, more algebraic geometry. It's, it's uh, the method. It's uh, rather different from uh, this one. So for this reason, I skipped uh, to mention this, uh, this but, but this only for this reason because it's uh, th this kind of method. I am not an expert in this kind of of, of method. I am more. Yeah, but it's different. It is used different, different, di different tool, and I am not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am not so familiar. Yeah, <laughs> I am more familiar with the work of Pierre Castonnier, yeah, Shintani, etc., than uh, this part of work, which is another point of view, which is important, of course. I am. Because at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About Seventy-nine, eighty. Yeah. Thank you. Thank no, but I did not understand why you mentioned the billion case. The billion case is only yes, interpolation. Yeah, but the dedicant data function is a product of Dirichlet L functions. So, uh, uh, yes. the billion case. So but there is no problem at all. A billion field, but also for any a billion L functions for a billion, any totally real field. You see, you okay. you, you take a hey, hey, character for okay. finite order. Yeah. Okay, then and you mix it up. Uh, but okay. And then you can do also interpolation, yeah. but it is impossible to, to do without getting the bits. Okay. So thank you very much. Other questions? Okay. So thank you. Thank you.